One night in the fall of 2018, I read a book. A book that instantly pulled me in. It was called Fly Fishing the Rocky Mountain Backcountry, written by a man named Rich Ostoff. This man had spent 25 odd years of his life hiking and fly fishing in the Rocky Mountains. Just a few pages in and I already knew what I had to do. Spend as much time as I have left on this earth hiking as much of that wilderness as I can. I found myself struck with something. Something people now refer to as wanderlust. A term that I've honestly come to hate. Wanderlust. Hashtag van life. Not all who wander are lost. Slogans crapped all over Instagram and put on t-shirts at your nearest Target store. Soon to be joined by brightly colored Patagonia hats. That look like they've never even seen the woods. But they've definitely seen the inside of a Starbucks or two. I spent a lot of time in the woods and on riverbanks getting dirty. I know what a properly abused hat looks like. And I've never seen one properly abused Patagonia hat. They look just as clean and pristine as the people who wear their $200 fleeces in posh Colorado mountain towns. In a world full of travel vlogs on Instagram and YouTube that seem to come nowhere close to representing real life and always feature some half-naked beautiful woman, I just wanted to try and make something different. Something raw and real. There are a few things that'll make a man feel dumber in this world than getting lost in the woods by himself, especially when you're on the fucking trail, which, in my defense, did seem to split off into two different directions. When you combine that with the fact that I'm an idiot, this was bound to happen. Now, although I'm an idiot, I'm not enough of one to go wandering into the mountains without some knowledge in navigation, but my skills are novice at best. So I relied on what knowledge I did have, which is to always trust your compass over anything. I got a late start hitting the trail on my day in, which I wouldn't recommend. You have less time to stop and filter water or eat food. Or as I learned, you might not get to camp until dark and have to set up your tent in the freezing cold night temperatures that the mountains can produce. Now I've been backpacking before, but never on a trip where it took me the entire day to get to camp. When I finally got to camp, I was freezing cold, my hands were shaking. I was hungry and most likely dehydrated too. Needless to say, one of my first priorities the next morning was to filter some water. If you've never been backpacking before, let me tell you something. 
you pretty much just spend the entire time filtering water. Backpacking is a constant battle to stay hydrated. It's fucking annoying. If you're not filtering water, you're using it to cook food. If you're not using it to cook food, you're drinking it. And if you're not drinking it, you're either pissing or sweating it out. And you better pray to God your filter doesn't take a dump on you. If it does, I hope you find some kind strangers nearby. Otherwise, you're going to have to resort to boiling it or just drinking it straight from the lake. It takes Giardia about one week to take effect. That should give you until just about the end of your trip before you're pissing neon green liquid out of the end you weren't meant to piss out of. A guy I know once got Giardia just by dipping his toothbrush in a lake one morning to brush his teeth. Another friend of mine got it on a rafting trip when a little bit of water got in his mouth. A few days later, he had to throw away his favorite pair of pants when what he thought was just a fart turned out to be the green misery of death. Giardia. Let's not kid ourselves, a really determined bear could probably get that pretty easily. Solo. Why go backpacking into the mountains solo? I won't lie. The thought of driving several miles from home and hiking into unfamiliar wilderness is pretty intimidating. 
but that ultimately was one of the reasons why I had to do this. You can learn a lot about yourself by spending a little time alone in the woods. You can learn a lot of things that you wanted to know, and you can learn a lot of things that you maybe didn't want to know. Maybe that was part of the fear I had, meeting a part of myself that I didn't want to meet. You do a lot of walking and backpacking, which leaves you with plenty of time to think. And even though the scenery is beautiful, your mind can often wander to ugly places. Maybe that's why people go solo backpacking, to find that part of themselves and confront it, face it. Or maybe not. Maybe you're watching this thinking, I don't know what the hell this weirdo's talking about. I don't think about that kind of stuff when I go solo backpacking. But what I found is that it's a great way to clear your head and face your demons. But maybe that's just me. Maybe you're watching this thinking, what the hell is this maniac talking about? I don't have these kind of thoughts when I go backpacking. What a fucking weirdo. The hike up was tough, but rewarding. I was treated to some of the most beautiful landscape I've seen in my life so far. But without fail, some midday rain came through and brought with it an army of mosquitoes ready for battle. The rain brought mosquitoes, but the mosquitoes brought rising trout ready and eager to eat. This hike that brought me to a golden lake that sat at 10,250 feet not only brought me to some of the best landscape I had seen in my entire life, it also brought me to something I had heard and read about but never seen. Sight fishing for golden trout. I could stand up on a rock and look through the crystal clear water to see golden trout cruising along and feeding on the bottom. These trout were either the smartest or the dumbest fish I've ever encountered in my entire life. I could cast from on top of a rock in open sight without spooking them. But I could also watch them swim up to my fly, inspect it, identify it for the fake it was, 
and then swim away with a swagger that seemed to ask, How stupid do you think I am? I could almost swear that some of them were even making intentional missed strikes at the fly, making me wonder who was really doing the fishing that day. But, in the middle of a feeding frenzy on this army of mosquitoes that had hatched, I was lucky enough to have found a few fish who managed to get a little careless, and I hooked into my very first golden trout. What led me to my first golden wasn't one of those glorious mayfly hatches you read about in books and magazines. No, it was a goddamn mosquito hatch, which is probably more realistic than the books and magazines, and also a humbling reminder to always bring a mosquito fly. It was in this moment that I remembered one of the other reasons I came out here, to escape something, to escape a different kind of wilderness and the animals that cohabitate it. fucking brutal. It was a hell of a hike. I tell you what though, worth it for those goldens. I wish I'd gotten up there sooner. I ended up getting chased out of there by a storm. I'm worn out as shit. I am tired. Yeah, I look pretty toasted. Got brutally attacked by mosquitoes. Holy shit. It rained a little bit. And they just fucking murdered me. But that's when the fishing got good too. So I had to become one with the mosquitoes. I just accepted it after a while. You know, I just told them they were my brethren. It's the, it was the only way I could give them a fuck you. Get the fuck out of here, you goddamn mosquitoes. Lied. You're not my brethren. Piece of shit. I hate every one of you. Fuck. There's a new guy camping down by the lake tonight. For the most part, everyone you meet hiking in the woods is cool, but once in a while you get an oddball. I mean, let's face it, only weirdos would do this kind of shit. You know, they always try and make this shit look glamorous. 
in the magazines and on the internet, it's not that glamorous. Your fucking feet hurt. Your sunburnt, tired, hungry all the time, thirsty. Eating freeze-dried food out of a bag, shitting in the trees. You smell awful. I forgot to mention too, your knees fucking hurt. I'm gonna have to get me some of those stupid ass trekking poles. I just think those things look so fucking dorky, but I think they really probably help a lot. I'm not quite sure what the fuck I'm doing. I had this whole idea in my head when I started doing this that I was gonna make it all cinematic as possible and shit, but you know, it's just not that easy to do on your own. It's kind of easier to make it a little bit, uh, I don't know, I guess they call it vlog. I fucking hate that word. I hate, I hate the whole vlog craze. You know, you go into an endeavor like this, you have a whole vision in your head. And I knew it wasn't going to be, like I knew executing it wasn't going to be like the vision. So I think I'm just going to have to adapt. Just kind of let this turn into whatever it becomes takes vacation from work to go and do work in the woods. Ooh, chili mac with beef. It's got beans. 12 grams of protein, that's it. Sons of bitches. Sometimes you get too hungry. You just fucking eat the shit freeze dried. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. It was this point that I realized I am now 22 minutes into a fly fishing video and I've yet to use one single folk song. Everybody's walking toward the dead road On a place in a foreign world Tattooed and broken like a starlet It's time to not catch a fish again Let's do this Feeling kind of hopeless. I was made to fall in love with you. I'd kill someone for a fucking cheeseburger right about now, though. Sticking to the roads that we had left here. Summer eyes have left this place. This fucking streamer casts like a Everything goddamn bowling ball. Uh, my time fishing, I've learned it always helps to be distracted. ABD, always be distracted. Take out your phone, check your Facebook, your Instagram. That's when you get a bite. Hiking back up there again. I have to. I'm right here. I have to do it. Oh, hey, it's you again. Why don't you join me today as we hike up this mountainside in search of the elusive golden trout? Come along.
Nature sucks. I don't even know why I do this shit. Both days that I hiked up to this lake, I managed to get chased out way too early by storms. And I couldn't tell if the storm I heard rolling in was going to be a lamb or a lion. I'm just not going to fucking risk it. I'm getting out of here. It's moments like these, running down the side of a mountain with thunder behind you. And you begin to wonder what the hell you're even doing up here. If I had to reduce it down to anything, I would probably explain it as just good old-fashioned soul-searching. An escape from the monotonous grind that life can oftentimes produce. There's gotta be a better way down than this. There is. Oh, I can blow up my knees if I'm not careful here. Well, we're getting there. Maybe I can find a fellow hiker. Offer him a hand job for a cliff bar. Change an HJ for a CB. I'm just about that hungry. Well, I'm about to eat the last of my meals. Only got one left. It's granola with milk and blueberries. You count that as a fucking meal, which I don't. Brook trout. Miserable little bastards. Brook trout may be small, but two things they definitely are not are ugly and polite. Never in my life have I encountered a fish that hates being brought to hand more than a pocket water brook trout. They are the most beautiful, angry sons of bitches you will ever meet. Hook into one and expect to be taken for a ride. What they lack in size, they usually make up for in temperament. Of course, if I lived in an environment where I were constantly fighting against a current struggling to maintain a calorie surplus, only to have the occasional meal turn out to be a giant fucking hook planted firmly into my jaw, 
I'd probably be pretty pissed off too. As my first trip into the mountains wraps up, I think a lot about what I hope to gain from all of this, and what I hope to give. I hope this will inspire you to take a walk into the woods. It's not as glamorous as you might think, covered in sweat, swatting off mosquitoes, praying to God your destination isn't too far yet, because your body aches and your stomach is growling. But the work is often worth the reward. Trading the grind of modern times for the more primal grind of days past. <laughs>